In this episode of Did You Hear, Jennifer Reeves and Chris Copenhaver talk improv and the West African talking drum. Then we'll give you a behind the scenes listen to why our ELL volunteers spend every weekend helping non-native speakers become proficient at English. Dave also tells you about our six by six books to go. Welcome to another edition of Did You Hear, the Johnson County Library podcast where we talk about what we recommend and also what's happening. And this week we are focusing on some events for teens. And as you know, our summer theme is a universe of stories. As part of that, a universe of connecting and learning. And a couple uh, events that teens can connect and learn uh, that we have. Uh, One is the West African talking drum event and another is let's improv and to talk about those two events i have two youth services librarians with me i'm jenny reeves i'm a youth librarian at the monticello branch and i'm chris copenhaver youth librarian at the central resource library well welcome to you both i think this is pretty exciting two very different events but i guess they're unified under this idea of a universe of connecting and learning all part of our universe of stories and so um, let me go ahead and read the description for the West African Talking Drum event. It sounds very exciting. It's time to play some drums. We will visit Ghana, West Africa, and explore a drumming tradition that dates back 800 years. Come experience how music is such an integral part of all societies of this region. Through a hands-on workshop, we will see how music makes the village dance, as well as how it speaks to them. Led by Bird Fleming of the Traditional Music Society, Society. Ages 12 to 18, registration is required, and you can register online or by calling 913-826-4600. That sounds pretty exciting, and this is where I would cue you, Christopher, hit the West African dr- talking drum. All right. Well, music is a great way to express I was going to actually have you play the drum. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that I didn't be like bring this. any drums. No, so there's no drums today. No drums, but music is still a great way to explore er, explore and create and tell stories and interact with others. Um, last year, we tried a workshop for beginning ukulele to learn how to play that. And we oh, wanted wow. to change it up a little bit this year and thought drums sounded like an exciting way to go. Yeah. And um, connected with the Traditional Music Society. Society. They've been uh, teaching throughout our community for many years. The, they especially focus on the traditional music of African and uh, Caribbean, Brazil, and um, um, how all of that has spread from Africa through the Americas and wow. where the music came from and um, how it continues to live on in various cultures today. Um, Bird Fleming has been doing this for many years, and um, um, I want to emphasize the hands-on part of that because you're not just going to be learning, you're going to be uh, getting a chance to play your own drums and oh, wow. experiment with some different styles and ways of doing things. It also get the story of where those drums come from and how they're used and how they're part of the cultures that, that uh, they emerged from. That is so cool. You know, uh, I I find that instrument just so intriguing because uh, if I could describe it, it's 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 a, a drum, but on the outside it's got cordage, right? Yes. And so by pressing in on these strings on the outside of the drum, you can get this one single drum to sound like hundreds of drums, just different tones and and sounds that you can produce from this drum and so um there's there's a lot of improvisation which we're going to talk to jenny in a minute about improv but uh it it it, it's a unique instrument. Yeah, yeah it, it, it in a way is part of the the long distance communication um, at one point. Really? Yeah, they use the the drums to to spread messages and talk to each other. Wow. And that's why it's called the talking drum. Um, and now it uh, it's just part of the music and part of what those drums do. Oh wow! And so that's you get a chance to try that out. 
Um, you mentioned that registration is required, so we expect this one to be full. The registration is only because we only have so many drums on hand, and we want sure. to make sure everybody gets one. So we're offering it back to back that day. If one session fills up, at, <laughs> the one o'clock session fills up, you can enroll for the two o'clock session to make sure everybody gets a chance. Well, you know what? I think I neglected to say dates and times. So what what days and times are we talking That's about? That's Tuesday afternoon on June 18 at okay. one o'clock, and again again at two. Okay, great. Yeah. Wow. So uh, how many seats are available per uh, session? He uh, he knew he could get 15 drums, and I think we upped that to 17 or 18 to make sure oh, wow. that we would get as many spots as possible. And so you get to come in and sit down at the drum circle and be part of exploring and making music together. How exciting. So yes. if you want to be part of that, or if you know a teenager that yes. would like to be a part of this, there's there's a limited number of seats and so make sure that you register but boy that sounds like fun yeah yeah okay well that is excellent um so uh we mentioned the the bit of improv that's in, involved with the uh west african talking drum let's talk about this exciting event called let's improv yeah so what's that all about um so the Let's Improv is presented by Paige Nelson from Creative Expressions. She's been doing this for years, and um, or 15 plus years. And we've done improv in the past, and so it's gone over pretty well with our teens. Our young adult literary councils awesome. tend to have those. Um, those are at multiple locations on Saturdays um, in Blue Valley on Sunday. Um, so we wanted to offer that to all of our teens. Great. So we connected with her, and um, she does offer one for younger kids. That's bringing stories to life. But that's okay. not exactly like true improv. We kept that for teens because they're just a little more able to do the improvisation so she said she's going to teach the fundamentals which begin with yes and dot 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 yeah right um ensemble work and risk to fail and she's going to bring costumes and scripts and it's going to basically be um determined by how much like you all want to participate so she has the improv to get you started and scripts if maybe it's just not going as smoothly but if you guys hit a stride and it's going well um it could be anything which it's kind of awesome to tie in this universe of stories yeah. and you're creating your own story here right well that's exciting so uh let me read the description it says teens will dive into three fundamental rules of the art of improvisation one yes and Two, ensemble. Three, risk to fail. These rules, when combined and practiced, allow students to feel the strength and possibility of their creative ideas in everyday life. This is an introduction and a chance to try out improv with friends. Yeah. Yeah. So we're offering it at three of our locations. Um, it will be at the Central Resource Library on June 25th, at the Monticello Library on June 27th, and at the Gardner branch um on july 15th and they're all at different times but if you check our website you can see when we're offering them and we are excited to have you guys come out that is so awesome so i i went online to find some rules of improv so mm -hmm. that if you know there are a lot of adults that are listening to this podcast and if they can't make it but they just find this topic interesting <laughs> i thought i'd jump into some rules for doing improv so first one is don't negate or deny other player uh follow what they're doing okay so okay. that's part of that yes and mm -hmm. and so um don't ask questions uh, make choices based on actions. Don't make assumptions. Uh, do a give and take. Listen, watch, and concentrate. And work to the top of your intelligence. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Sounds easier said than done, but... It uh, takes a skill that I do not think I have. Mm. Well, so. that's funny because Christopher <laughs> was just saying that he didn't either. And I was wondering if you'd entertain me with a couple improv games. We can try. I mean, it's probably going to risk to fail, but it's okay. fine. <laughs> well, well, that's that's all right. So the idea is this is kind of like uh, rock, paper, scissors. And so I'll go one, two, three, and 
when we get to three, you are either going to be an alien, a cow, or a tiger. So the alien is beep, beep, beep. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> the cow is moo. And, and by the way, I'm doing fingers for uh, you know, <laughs> the little antennas for the uh, the alien, um, cow horns for the, the cow, and then tiger. So, rawr. So we try this, and okay. the goal is to do this until we actually say the same uh, sound at the same time, and then the game's over. Okay. okay. And we live happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for, for allowing me a little rope here. All right. So remember, an alien, a cow, or a tiger. Okay. One, two, three. Beep, 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 beep. beep. Oh, mm. two aliens and one cow. We'll try it again. One, two, three. Rawr. Beep, beep, beep. Gah. Ah. <laughs> All right, we're going to try it again. One, two, three. Moo. Moo. Hey, there yeah. we go. I figured if I was cow yes. long enough, everyone would follow. <laughs> that, that reminds me of a recent picture book by Bob Shea. Oh, yeah? Um, it is um, Crash, Splash, or Moo. Ooh. And it has a cast of characters getting ready to do stunts, and it asks the readers to predict. Is it going to result in a crash, a splash, or a moo? That sounds Ooh. like an awesome book. Yeah. Oh, wow. Are there a lot of books that are like that? that uh... um, there are a lot of interactive books lately where you're part of the story. That one's pretty unique in its approach. I used to love as a kid uh, the Choose Your Own Adventure books. Yeah. Yeah. Kids still do. That's yeah, like yeah. one of the most common things I get. Mm -hmm. Do you still have these? Yeah. We do. So come oh, check them out. I, yeah. <laughs> I will relive my past and um, hopefully... Somebody will suggest an adult version. And if there they don't are. have... There are. Oh, yeah. I don't remember the author, but it's like if you win the lottery. Mm -hmm. And so like you immediately have to make your decision. Do you go to college or do you like just spend oh. the money? And then just hijinks. And they've, oh, that, start, they've started doing some nonfiction ones for kids as well. Yeah. So you get to try out and see if you can guess how things actually happened. Oh, oh, oh that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I have another game for us. Okay. 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 So this one you've probably done before, but it's the one word at a time story. Yeah. And so I'll say a word, and we'll just go clockwise. Christopher, oh. then you'll say a word, and then Jenny, you'll say a word. Okay. And hopefully we'll put together a story. All right. Once. After. Midnight. I. Ran. Away. To. Explore. The carnival. Stay words. <laughs> Whatever. The carnival. And. Never. Returned. The. I was going for end, and we could just end it down. <laughs> the, the end. The, it's the just a end. really creepy, scary story. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a fantastic story. But the idea is anybody can play that, right? Yeah. And yeah. it mm -hmm. uh, helps you build those uh, improvisational skills. And um, I had one more, um, and it's the and then story. So you start, and at any point, Another person can jump in and continue, or if somebody's pausing, then that's a fair opportunity for you to continue the story. One way that you can do this is use the word and, but, and therefore. And so when one person says their sentence, you end with and, and the next person provides their sentence, and then there's a but. Mm -hmm. Then there's a sentence, and then therefore. Okay. And so there's the conclusion. So an example of this, really simple. I went outside, and it was raining, but I had an umbrella. Therefore, I didn't get wet. Easy peasy, right? Okay, you guys got you, You've got this. Okay. All right. Are you? Are you ready? We'll see. I woke up this morning, and... My hair all fall, all fell out, but my mom has a bunch of wigs hiding in her closet. There, Therefore, <laughs> I went unnoticed. My baldness went unnoticed. Okay. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's try one more. Let's go. Let's go backwards. Okay. And, and do you want to start this time? Oh. 
okay. Jenny's going to start us off this time. Um, I woke up one morning, and the sun didn't shine, and... I decided not to panic, but... I really did end up panicking big time. (laughs) Therefore, my mom had to tell me it was just raining, and I was just being a baby. Okay. Uh (laughs) 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 All right. I think we've we've given this the old college try, but I think we've illustrated that it's a lot of fun to to play these games, and it's a way to stretch yourself a little bit, use your brain, and... uh, and uh, kind of laugh at yourself a little bit too. It's, I think we take ourselves too seriously sometime. So a little reminder, we've got two really great events coming up. One of them is the West African Talking Drum event. And the other is Let's Improv. And you can find all the details about not only these events, but all of the teen events that are available that we're throwing under this topic of universe of connecting and learning. That's part of our theme for the summer, Universe of Stories. Find all the details at jocolibrary.org slash events. Moo. (laughs) (laughs) We've got books to go kits on a lot of topics. So when you're in a hurry to grab some fun reading and activities for your little ones, we've got your back. Books to Go kits include audiobooks, books, activity suggestions, and more, all in one. Whether your little one's current obsession is weather, opposites, or bugs, we've got those fun topics and many more. Welcome back to Did You Hear? We are ready for I Didn't Know the Library Did That. And today we're talking about ELL. And it's a really interesting topic. We were just talking with our guest today out in the lobby at the Central Resource Library uh, about how libraries aren't just a place for books. There's so many different things that are going on at libraries. It's a public meeting space. It's a place for you to learn your entire life. And there are so many different programs that we have for folks. And today we're going to talk about English language learning. And I have three guests, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves. To my left. My name is Gladys O'Toole. Welcome, Gladys. And you work over at the Oak Park branch? Yes. And how long have you been with the Johnson County Library? I've been working uh, here for three years now. Okay, great. And then we have Neil. My name is Neil Agnew. I have been with this ELL program for the better part of four years now at Oak Park. Well, great. Thanks for coming out today. You're welcome. And I'm Mike Wood. I've been a volunteer at the Oak Park Library for about nine years, teaching English uh, to non-native speakers. Excellent. Okay, so years ago, I came out to um, participate, and I was blown away at just how many folks there are at the ELL program. Um, I remember one of our managers sacrificed her office just to give more classroom space. And so talk, talk about the experience that one might have if you walk in to the Oak Park Library on a Saturday morning. There's, there's three classrooms, right? There's an advanced, an intermediate, and a beginner's classroom. And starting at 9 o'clock in the morning, you'll see them lined up outside. And I don't know, Neil, you may have a better handle, but it seems to me there are probably... Uh, 30 uh, students, 35 students on any given Saturday waiting to come in. If it's a nice day out, uh, they may prefer to go to the park, but surprisingly, they often come to see us. In the four years that I've been a part of the program, I've kind of kept a tally, and I've now met people from 39 countries. 39. 39 countries, and um, all interested in improving their English for a variety of reasons. Uh, some are professional people uh, from other countries who need want to improve their English to get a similar position here. Uh, some are moms and dads who want to be able to have better communication with their children's teachers or doctors or just any given situation. So wow. they arrive early and they stay late and uh, they're all lovely people. I haven't met anybody in four years I wouldn't want for a next door neighbor. Nice. 
And Gladys, what's your role in all of this? I'm actually the point of contact between the ELL teachers and the managers, and I my role is to support them in whatever they need, um, and also to inform patrons of the classes, the levels that we have, and sometimes I also help them pick out which level they should start at, but okay. that always changes because they can choose their own, you know, where they want to be. So these classes are pretty full then. Um, are, are we talking like each each classroom is, is pretty much at capacity? We've, We've got three classrooms and um, yeah, they're very often full. It, it's a completely volunteer program. That is to say the teachers are volunteers and the students are volunteers. Of course, there's no cost to them, but there's um, no commitment. That is to say they can come in and try it. If they like it, then they uh, stay. If they don't, they don't like it. And the classes vary each day because you're not sure who the students will be. So it's always a new um, experience for the teachers and the students um, going over drills that you may have discussed previously, but there'll be a new one every Saturday. Um, and Gladys, we couldn't do it without the support of the administration, mm -hmm. which for which we're very grateful. So you have to be very adaptable then just to the levels of learning and, and also just the diversity of different languages. Do, do all of you speak multiple languages? No. No? Okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, but we are keen on finding people in class who are fluent enough in both languages that they're of service during the class time. Uh, I have a number of st students now who are becoming more assistants in the classes. I see. Uh, which works out tremendous. But no, I do not speak any language other than English to save my soul. But I do know that Valeria does, and I do know that Danielle does, and I do know that Harold does. And they sit around the room, and they're the first ones to say, if there's a new person, well, I'll sit by so-and-so. Or if a person comes into the class, we'll say, where are you from? Argentina. Oh, well, we probably have somebody from Argentina. Interesting. And, you know, sit with them and enjoy the day. Um, generally speaking, if somebody who usually comes to class isn't there on a given Saturday, it's probably because of family or school. Sure. Uh, summer vacations come in and we lose a few people. But, you know, Mike's right, on any given Saturday, there's at least 10 to 14 in my beginning class and at okay. least that many and more in the other two classes. Well, so take me through a class. Is it formal instruction? Is Do, do you come in with a curriculum, with a, a plan, or is it more serving the needs of what people are bringing to you? It's like, I'd really like to work on this problem, or I've heard something this week, I don't understand what mm -hmm. it means. How, do, how does it all work? Well, we, um, it's all of that. Uh, we come in with um, a set uh, objective for a, a class or sections of a class, maybe two or three objectives per session. But very often they'll come in and say, I've heard this and I don't understand what it means. On the uh, ability to speak another language, I do uh, have studied several languages, but that really has very little um, impact on the class except that I understand how language works. So when you have different language groups from Asia or Eastern Europe or South America uh, or Latin America, uh, the language is so different. Sure. Speaking the odds of speaking any one language that people know is uh, pretty small. Right. Um, but each uh, each class uh, week to week tends to be quite different. The beginners class, I think, uh, requires uh, some ability, as Neil's co-teachers would have, to translate. But I teach the advanced conversation class. Okay. And in that, we don't want them to speak. Uh, the local language. We sure. want to push them, force them, encourage them to speak uh, English. Yeah. Uh, and we'll correct them, maddeningly so, <laughs> but we'll correct them mm -hmm. when they mispronounce or use a wrong tense or something like that, but that's why they came. But it's all good-natured. It's, it's all I hope so. in... in <laughs> It's 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 all with the understanding that everyone is trying to help each other learn a language, which has to be really difficult. I, I've I've heard that it's much easier, you know, at a young young age to pick up multiple languages. But the older you get, the more difficult. But maybe that's not true. I've just heard that. Um, yes, it's it's challenging. <laughs> it's, well, it is. Uh, one thought on that, just uh, um, I've heard uh, and studied it to be true that. Beyond the ages of 14 or 15, 
your ability to speak a language without an accent is uh, gone. Oh, really? Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't be absolutely fluent. Oh. It's just that your pronunciation will be slightly off, okay. which makes you really hate a six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> because they can speak and learn and continue to speak like uh, native speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, right. uh, it's kind of interesting that. Wow. But the, the, the advanced class accepts that. Mm -hmm. And some of them are just marvelous at how they speak with nuance and understanding about English in different ways. But their accent will always be Russian or Spanish mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever it happens to be. Well, we begin every beginning class with uh, a set sentences on the board. And we go around the room, and I go first, and we introduce ourselves. And the board simply says, hello, my name is... I am from the country of, yeah. I've lived here, how long? And then we put a sentence on it, the end of it, just for fun. My favorite kind of movie sure. or whatever it is. And as we go around the room, people get to see where everyone is from. Right. And then I will present a lesson. And then hopefully that day I've got one, two, or three co-teachers. And then we'll take our students and divide them up and then work on lessons intensely in very small groups okay and then put the group back together for another lesson and then basically we have four half hours okay this is how i look at it so the first half hour is just let's see who's here today sure and then there may be a half hour on verbs uh-huh because verbs are tremendously difficult particularly the irregular verbs because there's no pattern there's no sense to it um and then we may get into basic conversations or then we'll address as we have in both classes, someone will say, I have a job interview in a week or two. Yeah. I've never had a job interview in America. Yeah. What's it like? Well, let's practice it. Let's go through it. Sure. Or we'll take an imaginary field trip. Okay, we're going to go out, get in the cars, we're going to go down to Cinemark and see a movie. Now, what do we need to know? Okay. Yeah. You're going to buy things there. Sure. Where are you going to sit? And just in general, what do you do? Uh, for them, what, hap what what should I do when I go to work and I go into the cafeteria and there's one seat left at a table and there's seven other people there and I don't know them and I'm not confident in my English. What, sure. do, I, what do I do? Right. You know? Yeah. So that's what we address. As you can tell, Neil, Neil's a skilled teacher. But having said that, let me underscore that the major qualifications for doing this is an abundance of goodwill. Mm. Yeah, it sounds People like it. who are mm -hmm. interested in learning and sharing and teaching, that's the requirement, wouldn't you say, Neil? Oh, absolutely. Um, my background is Irish and Belgian, and we come from a background of service and helping people. Okay. And at one point, my grandfather spoke only Belgian on the dairy, but because he got involved in games of poker uh -huh. and horseshoes, and the boss always had people up to the, the main house. They, as a group, gradually picked up English. So when people come into my classroom, I figure it's kind of a payback time or pay forward time. Sure. You know, this is kind of what we do. Wow, that's fascinating. Well, you know, um, I, I used to be a classroom teacher, and when I would leave the classroom, uh, I would either leave exhilarated or just drained, and sometimes both. <laughs> Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, if you're not exhausted in a very good way sure. at the end of class, you, you didn't leave it all out there. Yeah. And, and that's what we do. Uh, it's 9 to 11. We could go longer, mm -hmm. but I don't think we could go a lot longer because it's, you know, there's no sit down and do nothing time. There's always somebody watching you and needing help with something well sure and yeah it's just like you say you don't sit behind a desk well let's talk about some of those people do you have a good story is there one person or or several people that have just really you know stuck in your memory or mm. or a success story just something that you're really proud of oh I, absolutely um i couldn't count them all in four years but i give you an example uh a week or so ago one of the questions I had in class was, you win a million dollars. You finally play the lottery. What do you do with your million dollars? I know what I do with my million dollars. 
you know, but what do you all do with your million dollars? And I had them come up and write all their answers on the board in their own language so that we could all take a look at it. So we had so many languages on the board. And as we went through, there was a definite pattern. These people were all about the million dollars is going to benefit my family, my children, my parents. I said, well, what is in this for you? Well, it's family. Every single one. Nobody bought a car. Hmm. It was just for my family. I'm sure. bringing somebody. I'm doing something. Three, four generations of family. And that's yeah. all they wanted to do was help their family. I said, well, you're the right people to be here. Hmm. Let me say something about uh, the type of people. I don't know what image people have from what we're talking about, but there's every conceivable type of person. We have engineers and spouses of engineers who have moved here and green cards or citizens or whatever, and others who are here on contract with Cerner or Sprint or something, and they're going home afterwards, sure. back to their country, Russia or the Middle East or wherever they come from. And then there are people who um, live hand to mouth, work, working class people like me and Neil and mm -hmm. Gladys, um, who are just doing their thing. And one of them is typical. A woman from Peru who needs a lot of work on her English, but she works three jobs. Wow. And um, the, the um, image of uh, hard work and family and everything that she conveys to me and to the rest of the class is really remarkable. And what an asset to the community that attitude and that person is. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I imagine you really get to know all of your students. Hmm. Um, I'm sure that they really value your assistance, and <clears throat> whereas I taught a lot of classes people didn't want to be in, like uh, I had to teach like you know basic public speaking, and nobody wanted to be in that class, <laughs> and then all kinds of other communication courses. But mm -hmm. you're offering something that is so tangible, so necessary to their daily existence, and so I'm sure that they high they hold you in very high regard. Well, Gladys's um, empire that she sees at the Oak Park, oversees <laughs> at the Oak Park Library, um, the ELL is just a part of what a library is, the ELL program. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a community center that has resources of every conceivable kind in it, just uh, by showing up, Gladys. Um, do, do you see it that way as just being a major community center that has books and tapes and things like that? But lots of other things. Yes, definitely. I mean, when people come in, they usually ask us, hey, I heard that you guys offer ELL classes here, and I, like, I don't know, I want more information about it, and so I will describe to them the levels that we have, and then I also give them information on resources that we have, because a lot of people don't know that we have other things that they can use to, you know, improve their English. And yeah, it's just a place where people come to, um, you know, make connections with other people that are going through the same thing. They form re social relationships. So I think it's very important for our community. And I think what better place in the library to do this, right? It yeah. builds community, doesn't right. it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know there's quite a large group now of people among the three classes who are all on the same uh, app. The, the what WhatsApp, I think is the name of it. Okay. Yeah, they communicate with each other constantly on that mm -hmm. um, I check it every once in a while because sometimes they'll say okay Neil would you I've written something would you check it so, yeah nice. email it to me you know or I've I've got this paper I don't know what to do I, I know what it says but I don't know what it means or um, the <laughs> the mom who uh, I, I told Mike this I don't know if I've told you this emailed me the other day and she says I don't know what to do she says my teach I had a meeting with my teacher my son's teacher, and she says, he's a fist. He's a fist. He's a fist. He's a fist. What does that mean? <laughs> like, God, I've taught 35 years. I've never called anybody a fist. <laughs> I, don't, I said, why don't you call the school back and leave a note and, and ask her if she could explain that a little bit further. I said, okay. So the next day I get an email from her, and she says, okay, fist is wrong. I said, well, I gathered that. What's the deal? She says, well, let me read it to you. It says here, your son is a real handful. <laughs> what does that mean? And I said, well, as a former teacher, I'm going to tell you, 
that's okay. <laughs> it's okay to be a handful. He's a handful. Yeah. Handful is good. Fist, okay. I <laughs> can't help you with that. Oh, that's good. Idioms idioms are tough on. Oh, oh I can yes. imagine, yeah. Huh. Yeah, what about humor? Is that, uh, I mean, everyone likes to laugh, and you like to think that everyone has a sense of humor, mm-hmm. but I, I think humor is very different culture oh. to culture. Oh, do you remember the date myself, Johnny Carson, years ago or whatever, used to <laughs> get people from different language groups in a row and have them tell a joke in their own language to the person next door, and then the person would tell it in another language and then go around, and out it would come at the other end. It would make no sense at all and <laughs> certainly not be funny, but we, I have uh, students try to tell jokes in mm-hmm. their own language, and sometimes they come across and sometimes they don't, but yeah. it, it certainly is fun for the class to do. Yeah. But, but they all have a yeah. Very good senses of humor. Yeah. Uh, when we ask, you know, what's your favorite movie? Uh, they'll name an American movie. Or mm-hmm. the other day, we asked them, who do you think is funny? Who makes you laugh? Sure. And that was fairly universal in who they said. Well, the fundamental humorous thing in my class is mm-hmm. I'm hard of hearing, mm-hmm. and I teach pronunciation. Yes. <laughs> They think they can get away with it, but I catch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're, they're very happy when I make a mistake. <laughs> they're very happy when I mispronounce something. Uh, we're very keen on pronunciation. Sure. In that, When we first start class and go around the room, I say, tell, I want to hear your name. I want to hear where you're from. Mm-hmm. And I want to hear it the way you want it said. So are you from Mexico or are you from Mexico? You know, is your name Harold or are you Errol? Mm-hmm. Okay. Be precise. And I said the same with your people you meet at work or your bosses or whoever. It's your name. Yeah. It needs to be pronounced correctly. Yeah. And I, I've gotten used to saying the United States of America. Mm-hmm. I don't say America mm-hmm. anymore because there's 36 countries in America. Right. And they believe that they belong in that group of countries. So when they see a hat that says, make America great again, I tell them, that would be super. Yeah. That would be great if all 36 countries named America were a block. (laughs) That would be great. But no, they they understand humor. They, you know. um, One thing we don't do is is talk politics. No. Uh Because uh, we'll have uh, often Chinese students where there's some (laughs) issues sometimes, and Taiwan and Mm -hmm. China in the same class, and that's issues. Or we'll have uh, 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 people from the Middle East, Arab countries, Mm -hmm. or Ukraine and Russia in the same class. It's uh, it's kind of interesting. So we don't talk politics to the extent we can avoid it, that is. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think it's fascinating that you think of all the different culturals, uh, cultures that are, are represented. And I, I think maybe because it's close to lunchtime, um, is food ever involved? Does anybody ever bring any food? Oh, parties are the ro- only reason I go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Br- we had a, uh, one of the men in our class who was born in uh, Turkey but raised in Jordan. Mm. brought a snack breakfast thing for us <clears throat> excuse me all the other day and it was called Beirut night hmm. and it was a mixture of milk and cream creamy thing. sort of thing it was yeah. really <laughs> and pistachios on top yeah oh. he's an engineer yes mm-hmm. oh, yeah so we we enjoy when anybody brings anything and and we talk about it we talk we practice you know in the classroom going to a restaurant, uh, what to order, what things mean, especially yeah. what the idioms are that go along with it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I can imagine that's so many challenges to face. And um, I'd like to thank you for participating and, and helping folks, you know, and, and helping us, when I say us, the library, um, help us fulfill our mission, which is to, to help make people's lives better, to be a place where um, education is accessible and that uh, yeah, hopefully uh, you can continually learn at the library. And, and the ELL program is exactly that. And I want to thank you very much for coming by today. 
And uh, is there any thought that you would like to leave our listeners with? Um, I would just like to say that the classes are every Saturday. They're 9 to 11. Uh, there's no exams, like we said. There's no registration needed. Um, and they run pretty much year-round, right? You guys mm-hmm, can take mm-hmm. a break. And it's taught by these awesome volunteers that we have. They're just so committed to the program. And thank mm-hmm. you so much for that. And we, we are interested in, in volunteers. The last three volunteers that are working with me in the beginning class are uh, young college students who are interested in getting degrees in ELL and so uh, one came in a couple days ago I talked to her and she says can I observe I said no but you can help yeah so you don't necessarily need folks to lead the classes, but just no. assist. Just assist, and and that helps with the when you when you break from the large group down to the smaller groups. Well, you um, figure what it was like for you in school. The number of times you did not ask a question. Sure. Now multiply that by the fact that you don't speak the language. Mm. So if we can have somebody just sit next to someone else, you know, I, it just makes a world of difference. Well, I would, uh, I, I would I would like to to point out really quickly. Um, if you would like to volunteer, please go to our website, jocolibrary.org/volunteers. And if you uh, are interested in learning, teaching is a wonderful way to do it. I learn so much about the world, and uh, that's a reason that makes me get up on Saturday morning and go do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you all so much. Mm-hmm. For more episodes of Did You Hear, go to the Johnson County Library website, jocolibrary.org slash didyouhear.